we'd like to welcome each and every one of you here today, whether you're here or whether you're online. I think, is our special guest here, Ron? Oh, okay, I just couldn't see her, wherever she's at. Well, we have a special guest today, and uh, her name is Melissa Carpenter. Um, if you're new here, you might not know who Melissa is. She is the widow of Bob Carpenter, and Bob was very instrumental in getting us involved in the Kentucky mission. But Bob has passed away, so Melissa is going to carry on the ministry that Bob started. So we've, um, you know, collected items for the Kentucky Mission for several years, and you received a handout today with the items that you may purchase for the Kentucky Mission, and the date is on there that we will collect on March 19th. So how we do that is we all bring our stuff on March 19th. 19th, don't bring it a Sunday ahead because we have no place to store things here. So you have to do it on March 19th. You bring the items to church. After church, we all go outside and they're loaded in a trailer that delivers the items to the Living Waters Mission. So that's how that works. And Melissa's going to share a lot more about that today. So um, we thank you for the, the goody donations that are coming in. We appreciate that. And I put Pam's phone number in the handout so that if you want to bring something, it would be very nice and courteous if you would just call her and tell her so that we don't have 10 of you bringing donations on one day. So that's there. But you know, in case of losing your precious handout, you can always give us a call. We do a lot of answering of questions like that, so that is fine. Okay, we're going to dismiss the children to Kids Church. We can have the ushers come forward. We're going to go ahead and take up our offering this morning. Um, while they're doing that, I want to acknowledge uh, Abby. Where are you, Abby? Okay, Abby. Abby Allison, stand up. Abby's the uh, student of the month at Elmwood this month, so we want to just acknowledge that. Good job. Um, I have a couple prayer requests. Um, keep in prayer Braxton. Cyber's going to have surgery on his ears tomorrow morning. Oh in uh, Columbus, so keep Braxton in prayer, and also Julie Vrazer's daughter, Kelly, is having some heart issues, so we want to keep her in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. Lord, we just thank you for, for all that you do and for working in our hearts, and Lord, just helping us to be more like you. Lord, we pray you be with Braxton tomorrow as he has his surgery. Lord, just watch over him and and just be with him through this and help everything to go smooth. Just guide the doctors as they do this surgery. Lord, we pray you be with Kelly. And we just pray you just touch her. And Lord, just heal her. And just uh, uh, be with her as she goes through various tests and things. And, and Lord, just let her know that you're there to take care of her. And, and just bring a healing to her body. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for your blessings. And thank you for your faithfulness to us. And for all that you do for us. Thank you, Lord, that we can give back to you a part of what you blessed us with. So, Lord, we just ask you to receive our offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And at this time, uh, we're going to have Melissa Carpenter. Melissa's going to come, and she's going to share with us about uh, what's happening with in his service uh, and uh, what's going on with that. So, you're welcome. Yeah, hold it pretty close to your mouth. Okay. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. I've been to quite a few churches, and I do have to say, you guys are the friendliest bunch I have ever met. Thank you so much for making me feel welcome, and now I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's okay. So, but thank you so much for making me welcome this morning. Those of you who know Bob Carpenter, his life mission was missions. Bob went to Haiti eight times. He did several missions in Haiti. I was very fortunate to go with him one time and know what it was like to go to Haiti. Um, I actually liked it. It wasn't as horrible as everybody made it sound. Um, we did have to deal with a few rats and some big cockroaches and um, some other weird stuff, transportation issues and things like that. But 
everything Bob thought of was about other people. That's the way he thought. That's the way he lived. So not only Haiti, um, Bob did missions in Louisiana for flood victims from the hurricanes. He went to um, Africa. I don't know how many people know that, but he did go to Africa one time to a mission in Africa. He tried to go to Haiti again recently, just before he passed away, but with the uprising in Haiti, I'm not sure anybody's going to be able to go there anytime soon. But my thought process when Bob passed away was, how am I going to keep his name going? How am I going to keep his work going? So with a lot of work from a couple of people, some of you know C.P. Foster. Uh, it's one of Bob's friends that was on Fellowship of Christian Farmers board with him. His daughter, Tammy Churchill, myself, and C.P. Foster's sister have all gotten together and we've been able to continue Bob's mission with a 5031C. A lot, you don't know how much work goes into a 5031C, but it does. But we have it. Yay. Hallelujah. Thank <laughs> you, God. So we have that. And we have started a mission in Bob's name called In His Service. And um, Ron, can you hold this up? I would like to show you the logo. This is the logo, the heart with the cross, and the verse saying, use whatever gift you have received to serve others. So that is 1 Peter 4.10, if anybody wants to look it up. But this is um, our logo, and um, we came up with that with an artist. We wanted to get all of our thoughts in that. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. Um, Along with the Kentucky mission, which was near and dear to Bob's heart, I think he put on three metal roofs with the help of quite a few people here down in Kentucky at Living Waters, and we still wanted to continue that mission. So that mission is still continuing, and you got the list, and Mary went through. We're going to bring the trailer and a truck, um, and we're going to haul the stuff down on the, uh, I think they're leaving on Monday after, but we'll pick up on the 19th um, and deliver to Connie. And then I think a bunch of you are going to go down a little bit later and maybe organize what we're dropping off and just leaving for you guys to do. So that's, organization is Connie Gundy's <laughs> job. She does good at that. So, but not only that, um, we have done a couple other missions besides Kentucky uh, Living Waters. Um, when Kentucky flooded, um, I donated my camper, I should say Bob and my camper, to the Kentucky flood victims because most of them had to stay an hour away because there were no rooms close by. So uh, CP took my camper or Bob and my camper down to Kentucky and actually donated it to a church. And I left everything in it, anything that they needed, the sheets, the towels, the dishes. I, I of course, wouldn't need those. So I left everything in it and I let the church decide where this camper should go. And hopefully they put it and gave it to a family that could put it on their lot and while they're cleaning up their house from the flood in Kentucky that they could go ahead and they could use, they could stay there instead of driving back and forth forever to try to get that done. Um, we are also partnering with GoServe Global. I don't know, how many, anybody heard of GoServe Global? Nobody. Okay, so when Bob was in Haiti, um, GoServe Global gave us, grain, gave him grain bins. And they put them up and made them homes for people. Now, you would be surprised. And if anybody was at Scrap last year, there was a grain bed that was put up. That is from GoServe Global. And um, people can live in those. And they're not hot. We put Dove candy inside the one we built at Scrap, and it did not melt. And no matter how warm it is, they're, they're cool. Um, people can live in them. And so we have partnered with them. And we take this uh, grain bin, we've taken it to a couple different areas, farm shows and whatever, and we've taken it for them to, they would put up, we would put up, and then people would know what it's for. So you can buy one of those bins and we can donate that to whomever might need a place to stay if they have it on their property or whatever. So we are partnering with GoSurf Global. We have been trying to partner with a lot of other different organizations and a lot of other different um, people in order to can continue Bob's message and um, his mission process. 
we are working towards that. We have been um, lucky enough to get a pickup truck and um, we have bought a couple of trailers and we've been able to do that in order to accommodate some of the things because going to Kentucky, <laughs> as some of you know, there's a lot of hills and mountains and valleys that certain vehicles might not quite make it. So um, we've got a decent truck that will get us down there and back. And we definitely appreciate all of your help in all of your donations. You guys have never, never let us down when we've asked for donations for Living Waters. I know Bob used to take down full trailer loads um, down to Living Waters for Connie and her group. And um, of course, we're not asking for clothes this time um, because their Redbird is full to the roof and um, we just don't have any place to put clothes. So if we could keep it to the list that you have, that would be wonderful. And CP will be here on that Sunday and he will pick up your items. And if anybody else would like to help volunteer in his service, um, in Bob's name, we would love to have you. Um, we could get you an itemized piece of what we're doing at the time and where we might need to go and what we might need to do to help because there's gonna be time we're gonna need more than us five people that are on the board right now um, in order to get more items done. So we'd like to reach out to more people. So thank you very much for the time. Again, thank you, Ron, for letting me come and, and take up time from your sermon. I, that's no. the best part. I could talk longer. <laughs> um, yeah. She always said I got the day off when somebody came. Yeah, so. he, he's <laughs> working today, believe it or not. <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, one thing you had to appreci appreciate about Bob, that I appreciate about Bob, was his willingness. You know, um, he was just willing. I, I've often heard stories of people say, well, I need this done or I need that done. And Bob would say, well, what's your next problem? You know, he, that was his thing. Well, I got that taken care of. We can go do that. And, and Bob was uh, just always willing. And I think the willingness is a big thing. You know, because, you know, God uses different kinds of people. You know, and sometimes he uses some that aren't as obvious as others in our mind. And uh, I want to talk today and think about God uses the weak. You know, God uses the weak. Wow. You know, that doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make sense. You know, because most of us think along lines of, well, you got to be strong. You know, you got to be strong. Uh, we don't like the feeling of being weak. I don't like, I don't like it when I don't feel adequate. I don't like it when I don't think I can. I don't like it when I, I don't, I don't, I don't like to do that. I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I want the assurance that it's all going to work out all right, that I'm going to have the strength and I'm going to be able to get the job done. And that's not really how God works. You know, God uses, God uses everybody. He uses everybody. So that eliminates our excuses. You know, if you think about it, it eliminates our excuses. I want to start with uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 6th verse. Paul says, for though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, because he says it's a fool to boast. He says, for I speak the truth, for I will speak the truth, but I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears of me you know Paul says I might have a desire to boast you know I might like to say well look what I did or look how this went or look what happened but he said actually I'd be a fool to do that I'd be a fool to do that he says it's actually foolish to boast in myself because he understood something you know, I think he had an understanding of, of where his abilities and strength really came from. In uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 12, Paul says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. You know, the warning is, be careful about the time you think you can do it, about the time you think you got the strength, but at the time you think it's based on you, there's a chance you're going to fail. You know, there's a chance they're going to fail. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful to take heed, to not become overconfident. You know, I think confidence is good, 
But, you know, we're to put our confidence in the Lord. You know, the Christians, we're to be confident, but our confidence is in him. Our confidence is in him because he wants to use the people that aren't confident. You know, the people say, well, I can't do that. You know, sometimes we think, well, I, I could never do that. I couldn't do that. You know, Bob was just an ordinary person. You know, now ordinary people are going to carry on, you know. And people who think, well, how, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? How are we going to make this happen? But I think it's, it's the understanding that it's not us. That it's not really us. That, you know, the Lord wants to use people just like you and me. Just like you and me. In Luke, in Luke the uh, 22nd chapter, the Apostle Peter, uh, he, had a, he went through a situation right before Jesus' death in Luke 22, starting at verse 31. The Lord said to him, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. And he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Peter says, Lord, I'm not going to fail. I can, I'm ready to go to prison. I'm ready to go to death. I'm willing to die. And Jesus said to him, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times. So Peter, I think at that moment, says, I can do it. Peter says, I got the strength. He says, I'm strong. I can handle this, Lord. I'll go, to your, I'll go to prison with you. I'll go to your death. Look at me. I can do this. And then we find in uh, verse 54 of that, of that chapter, when they arrested Jesus, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter, brave old Peter that's got all the strength, followed at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them, and a, servant, a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, well, this man was also with Jesus. After a little while, another one saw him and said, well, you also are of them. Peter said, man, I am not. Remember, in his own strength, brave old Peter. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also is with him, for he's a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I do not know what you're saying. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Peter you know, at first I believe that Peter was responding to Jesus and he was saying, well, you know, in my strength, I can do this. I can, I can do it. You know, a lot of times I think we think we can. A lot of times we think, I can do that. Our desire, a lot of times our desire is to do something. We have a certain desire. Like, I, I want to do that. I want to do that. But you never know until the time comes. And you never know until you realize that I really don't have the strength to do that. I don't have the strength to do that. That strength isn't within me. And then Peter, when he wrote uh, the books of Peter, in 1 Peter 5.10, it says, May the God of grace, so now may the God of all grace, okay, you know what grace is? It's unmerited favor. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. You didn't accomplish it. It's not your strength, but it's the grace of God who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered for a while, after you've gone through some things, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So now Peter understands that it's God who's going to perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle him. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever Amen. I believe after all that happened, Peter then saw, Peter then saw that, well, it's not really my strength. It's not really. It's God who strengthens me. It's God who perfects me. It's God who establishes me. It's God who settles me. It's his 
grace that works in my life and allows me to do those things. So then we see it's a different, it's a different perspective. You know, where does my strength come from? My strength comes from the Lord. In and of myself, I'm really not as strong as I think I am. You know, not quite as strong as I think I am. Back in 2 Corinthians, back in 2 Corinthians, that 12th chapter, in the, uh, I believe it's the 6th verse. In the 6th verse, Peter says, or G, the word says that I speak the truth. What's the truth? What's the truth? What's the truth? We need God's grace and mercy. You know, there's times when you may be strong. I don't know if you've ever ran across situations. Sometimes, sometimes your personality allows you to be strong in certain situations. Maybe because you're comfortable with them. You can handle them. Maybe you've done them before. And you can do this. I'm comfortable. But then somebody asks you to do something you've never done before. I can't do that. I can't do that. I don't, I don't have it within me to do that. The Bible says it's not within you. It's not within you. That's true. You don't have it within you to do that. You know, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So where does my strength come from? Where does my strength come from? The children of Israel, they were, they were building a wall. They had been, been away from Jerusalem for a while, and, and they came back, and they were building a wall. And Ezra was a scribe, and Ezra had, had stood up, and he started to read the Word of God. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know for sure what that would be like. I, I sometimes think that happens at times in our country, you know, we're getting to the point that our young people growing up don't know the Word of God. They, you know, as LifeWise is in the schools, they run into a lot of children that they have no idea what a Bible is or they've never opened one. They don't know who these people are you're talking about. They've never heard the Word of God. And that's what happened to the children of Israel. They hadn't heard the Word for a while. And in Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, after they had heard the word, you know, it's interesting. You know what they did? They stood from morning until midday and listened to somebody read the word of God. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? They stood from, from morning until midday, and all Ezra did was read from the word of God. You think, well, who's going to do that? I hope the air conditioning was on. I hope there was a breeze says they stood. They stood. And the Bible says that they wept as they heard the words. They wept. It started to penetrate their heart because they hadn't heard it before. And Nehemiah, he stood up in Nehemiah 8.10. He said these words. Nehemiah said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those who have nothing, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Where does your strength come from? Well, Nehemiah said, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, it comes from him. It's his, it's, it's his for us. We look to him. We look to his word. His word is life to us. His word gives us life. It gives us joy. And we look to that, and then it says it gives us strength. It gives us strength. You know, you can be physically strong and weak in spirit. You can be physically strong and have all kinds of strength. But, you know, it's the Lord that gives us that inner strength. That inner strength. It's that strength that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, the emphasis is in, the emphasis, I think, should be on in Christ who strengthens me. It's not, I can do all things because look at me. But I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength to do it. I have nothing to boast about. You know, 
when your strength comes from somewhere else, what do you have to boast about? What do you have? You have nothing because you understand where your strength comes from. You're understanding the one who gives you that strength. Your understanding is that I am dependent upon him. I'm dependent upon him. I believe that's why he, he kind of always wants us to stay in that state of dependency. You know, because I think even as Christians, we can get to a point where we think, okay, I've got it now. I can handle it. You know, I've got I kind of I know how to do this. I can handle it. But I believe he wants to keep us in that place where we need him. We're dependent upon him. You know, I, I've shared it before, but, you know, I always for me personally, it's like every week on Monday, unless something happens unusual. But usually on Monday, I'm thinking, oh, no, what am I going to preach next Sunday? You know. Every once in a while I think, wouldn't a series be nice? Because at least it'd be settled for three or four weeks maybe. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with series. I'm all for it. But honestly, it's that feeling of dependency. Lord, I need you again. And I believe that's what he wants. I believe that's what he wants. He wants us to be dependent upon him. He, he doesn't mind keeping us keeping us in that place where we're dependent. He doesn't mind that. In 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, starting at the 7th verse, the Apostle Paul says, Lest I should be exalted above measure, lest, lest I should start to get a big head, lest I should think of myself as more than I am, lest I should be exalted above measure, by the abundance of revelations, because God has shown me all these things. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. Now, you know, there's been a lot of speculation over the years about what that thorn in the flesh was. I don't care what it is. Any thorn in my flesh is a bothersome thing. I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. You know, when you get a thorn in the flesh, you know, it's almost like, did you ever get a sliver? A little itty bitty sliver? And it's like, that's all I can think about. That's, that's, that's all I can think of. This little thing in my finger has occupied my time, my thinking. Like, oh, I've got to get rid of that thing. So Paul says, so that I wouldn't get too big of a head because of all that God has shown me, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Okay, so... This was something that came was pretty strong because it says a messenger from Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So Paul says, you know, this, this thing, whatever it was, you know, do we ever say that people are a thorn in our side? You know, we've said that. We've heard that. Sometimes people are thorns in our side. You know, whatever, whatever this thing was, this messenger of Satan, he says, it came so that I wouldn't be exalted above measure. Kept me, kept me in my place and understood who I really was. He says, concerning this thing, I plead with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Three times. He goes, I mean, he got tired of it. Whatever it was, it was bothersome. He said, three times I asked the Lord to take care of this. And he said, the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than the power of Christ, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That is completely backwards. That is completely against everything we normally believe. That when I am weak, then I'm strong. When I can't handle it, then I'm strong. When I don't know what to do, then I'm strong. When I feel inadequate, then I'm strong. That's not how we think. That is not how we think. Because I'll tell you why. 
If we thought that way, we would then be willing to let God use us. What would stop us? You can't say, well, I can't do that. Well, I can't, I can't, that, uh, that makes me nervous. You know, the, the argument's gone. The argument's gone. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. So if you're weak, guess what? You qualify. You qualify. So as we come to him, as we express our weaknesses, God says, you qualify. You qualify. Well, I can't, I can't do that. You qualify. Now, I believe we all have different abilities. You know, we have different things that God has given us. I think even the strengths that we have naturally come from God. You know, he's made us certain ways. But I am convinced that God would stretch us beyond my capabilities. That's just, that's just how he is. That his, his, his desire is for us to do more than what we're capable of. You know, that, well, I'm weak because his strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, that means I have to be willing to let him. I have to be willing to let him work through me. You know, I have to be willing to look to him, to acknowledge him. Okay, Lord, you work through me. You know, sometimes that's unsettling. I think it's always unsettling personally. If we're honest. If we're honest, it's unsettling. Because it means I'm going to have to trust him. The biggest example I ever think about is when God said to Abraham, pack your family up and leave. I got a place for you to go. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to tell you where it is. Just get up and get going. I think that to me, that's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? So I think he says to us, hey, I've got things for you to do. Take a step. Step out. You know, well, I can't. I'm afraid. That makes me nervous. You know, I remember, I'll, I'll share this with you. I remember when I was young, around 19, 20 years old, I was teaching a Sunday school class at the time. And I was so nervous and so upset. And if any of you understand this, you know, if you get nervous, it does funny things to your body sometimes. And I'll never forget, week after week, two minutes before I'm ready to get up and teach, I'm making a quick trip to the bathroom. That's the most awful, awful feeling. Because I, you know, I, w I, I think I was scared I was nervous, but, you know, something inside of me said, well, you just got to do it. You know, I believe the Lord was saying, you know, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. And it took a long time before I ever got over that. You know, it took, I mean, it wasn't just one or two. It was years, years. But, you know, sometimes we have to understand that we look to him and we try. We have to put it to work. You know, if we believe that he's my strength, then I got to be willing to let him be my strength when I'm weak. I got to be willing to let him do it. I got to I got to step out of the boat. You know, Jesus, when he was out walking on the water, you know, you you can say, wow, that's really cool. I bet I could do that. Well, you know, everybody in the boat might have said that. Hey, that's cool. And then old Peter, what did he do? He got up and put his foot over the side of the boat. Well, that's a big first step. You know, and then he got out there and he started looking around. He went, whoa, I'm not as, how am I doing this? You know, how's this working? Never done this before. He got to thinking about it and down he went. But Jesus reached out, picked him up, picked him up. So, you know, we trust him. We trust him with our weaknesses. Weaknesses only makes you qualify. Makes you qualified to put your trust in him. You know, let him do it through you. Let him use you. You know, well, I, you know, I've been thinking about going and seeing so so, but I don't know. Just I don't know what to say, and I don't know. Go see him. 
I'm just telling you, go. A lot of times, you know, there's things, well, I, I don't know, that may, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Well, if it keeps coming and you keep thinking about it, I suggest you go. I suggest you go. And you do whatever it is. Because I believe God has things for us to do beyond our ability. Beyond my, my seeing my ability. Beyond what I see. Because I look at my weaknesses. And I say, well, I can't. Your weaknesses only make you qualify. Only make you qualify to do what God's calling you to do. And I believe if you look through Scripture, Jesus, you know, when he, when he picked people, and he never picked the people that you look qualified. This morning, you know, we looked at him picking Peter and Andrew. You know, when Jesus was looking for disciples, he didn't go, Wow, look at that guy. He's been in church for I don't know how much. And, you know, he stands up and he can talk to people and he can do this and that. He went out by the sea and found a couple old dirty fishermen. Why? Why? Because they were available. They were available and they were willing. You know, a lot of times that's where we, we you know, we're available, but we're not willing. We're not willing. We, we got to look past ourselves. We got to look to him and trust him. Trust him to use us. You know, I pray if you have children, you know, encourage your children, you know, encourage them to look beyond themselves and trust God. To let God use them. You know, you never know how God's going to use these young people. You know, I, I'm, of course, you know, I'm to the point where I'm really believing for young people. You know, I'm really, I'm really believing for young people. You know, that God's got a plan. And he'll use anybody. Amen. Anybody that's willing. Don't underestimate how God can work through you. I don't care who you are. You know, and you say, well, they don't give me a job. I want to tell you something about that. Don't wait for a job. You may wait the rest of your life and never get a job. If you believe God's called you to do it, start doing it where you're at. You know, start where you're at. Do what God's called you to do right where you are. You know, don't blame somebody else because, well, they never gave me a job. If you think you're supposed to teach, start teaching. Well, who am I going to teach? Well, open up your home. You know, see who comes. Invite somebody. Talk to somebody. Or, well, I'd, I'd like to serve, you know, what Bob's done. Well, you know, there's plenty. I mean, start serving. It's like you don't need a job. There's people all around us that need something done. They need help. They need this, need that. Start serving wherever you're at. Whatever it is, just start doing it. What I found is you start doing it, and eventually the rest of the people catch up and they go, oh, that's what you do. You know, that's my thing. Start doing what God's called you to do and people will finally catch up. You know, but just be willing. Be willing and know that you're qualified. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your willingness to use us. The Lord, you use us just the way we are. Lord, you use us with all of our weaknesses, with all of our failings. But Lord, you want us to just depend upon you. To depend upon you to work through us. So Lord, just help us to be willing. Help us to be willing to allow you to use us. Lord, just help us to start where we are. To start in some small way maybe. You've never despised small beginnings. So, Lord, just help us to be willing to allow you to work through us. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, just encourage us as we serve you. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.